Hey guys, and welcome to The Political Riot. I'm your host, Mike Taylor, and this week we once again have so much to go over. Like I predicted, the government reopened, and that's exactly what happened. And we'll go over to a more somber issue, but one by slamming the NRA a little. And by a little, I mean a lot. After that story, we'll go a little artistic with a very fun graffiti artist named Banksy. And to end, we'll be going off track a little, and we'll hit up some sports before coming back to our guest, who is a familiar face. We have not John Oliver on again, and we'll be going over the topics before wrapping it up at the end. I'm your host, Mike Taylor, and this is The Political Riot. The government finally reopened, which means that thousands of furloughed federal workers get to go back to work. The funny thing here is that we shouldn't even be celebrating this at all. See, there shouldn't even have been a government shutdown. But no, the GOP was all unhappy at Obamacare and wanted to shut down the government and all that stuff. Thanks to that, the rest of the U.S. had to suffer. Thankfully, though, Obamacare has survived, and we can move on and... Oh, wait. Wait, what? We, we can't? W why not? Oh, because the website that allows us to register for Obamacare is busted. All right, yeah, that, 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 make, that makes sense, I guess. Healthcare.gov has applicants and the Obama administration talking a lot about frustration. If we had an ideal situation and could have built a product in, you know, a five-year period of time, we probably would have taken five years, but we didn't have five years. In an exclusive interview with CNN Sanjay Gupta, Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius says contractors have been asked to bring in their A-teams to fix the issues with the website. The contractors didn't, uh, didn't, didn't do such a great job so far. Well, I, I mean, didn't, Why didn't they bring their A-team in in the first place? I, I can't tell you um, why are we why saying they, three weeks now bring your A-team into this, this whole equation? We have hoped that they had their A-team on the table, but I, I am talking to CEOs and urging them to uh, make sure that we have the talent that they have available. Top Republicans, including Congressman Paul Ryan, have called on Sebelius to resign. And this website, paid for by the Republican National Committee, invites people to sign a petition and call on the president to fire her. Did you ever talk about resigning to the president? What I talked about is doing the job that I came here to do. Uh, this is the most important work I've ever done in my life. Sebelius and President Barack Obama have both stressed the benefits of the Affordable Care Act amid the website delays, saying the problems are related to volume, at least, are a sign people want to enroll. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. Okay, the funniest part of that was probably the fact that the Republicans want Catherine Sebel Kathleen Sebelius to resign. They have a website dedicated to getting her fired. Really, Republicans? Really? I'd like to say there are no less than five websites dedicated to getting Republican Speaker John Boehner fired. There's a Facebook page ded dedicated to it. And there's a Fire Boehner advertisement on TV. There are hundreds of anti-Republican websites that were born from the government shutdown, too. I mean, really? You're, you're trying to get this woman fired. All right. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. I'm actually happy about this whole issue, not because I can't sign up and get health care, but because this is a bipartisan show. And now I finally have something to smash the Democrats about. But back to the whole accessing Obamacare thing. I mean, I can still sign up by mail or over the phone. Right? Let me try it by phone right now. Hello? Yeah, I'd like to sign up for uh, Obamacare, please. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll hold. All right. Okay, yeah, just transfer me right over. It's cool. I got this. Oh. Okay, really, that, that long. Wow. That, that seems a little excessive, actually. All right, I'll, I'll call back later, okay? All right, thanks. Bye. Uh, I've just been put on hold for a year. High volume, I guess. But hey, I mean, snail mail isn't dead right. I can still, you know, send all that stuff out. All I got to do is fill out this form and mail it in. I mean, how, how hard could this possibly be? All right, let's see. Question one. Every address you've ever lived at. Uh, let's see. Phone, every phone number you've ever had. Name of the girl you're going to marry and your favorite color. Seems like a kind of weird first question, but 
and I'm also going to need a bigger envelope, or maybe a box. Uh, anyway, as you can see, this is a huge issue, but let's see what Ms. Sibelis has to say about it. Thousands of people have signed up. We know that people are getting through every day. It is not where we need it to be. It isn't as smooth as we want it to be for the volume of people who want this product. The good news is we have a product. We have a market. We have competitive plans, affordable prices, and no one will ever be locked out of the insurance market again with a pre-existing health condition. Okay, so does it work? Does it not work? I don't know. I, I can't sign up for something I'm required to sign up for. I, I can't just email this stuff or like fax it maybe. No, of course not. That would require a ridiculous amount of paper. Why don't it take to print out every form of this whole thing? Wait, wait, this just in. There is a way to do it via computer. The government mailed us this kit actually. Naturally there's a bit of a charge but with uh, shipping, but let's, let's see what they got us here. Ah. CDs. Awesome. I mean, what better? Let's see, let's see what I can do here. Uh, I got the instructions right here. All right, let's see. Step one, put, plug them, put the disc, into this DVD or CD-ROM over your computer, which I do not have. My computer does not have one of those. Thanks, Obama. You really, you know, you're, you're really, you're, you really want to lie on that one. So, uh, you know, I'm really surprised I didn't send us floppy disks or something like that because my computer doesn't have one of those either, ironically. Anyway, back to the Republican side of things. Uh, Ted Cruz from Texas returned home to a hero's welcome on Monday, pledging to a crowd of excited supporters that he would continue the crusade against President Barack Obama's health care law despite criticism from members of his own party. Despite some moderate members of Cruz's party questioning his decision that led to a 16-day government shutdown that resulted in Republicans getting none of their demands, the freshman senator has been heralded by conservative activists for his efforts to defund Obamacare and not cave to outside pressure. Because it's well known, if you fail miserably once, then it pays to ram your head into a brick wall. But look, what, what I am focused on is that Obamacare isn't working. And that's frankly what I would encourage those of y'all in the press to focus on. It's easy to find one person in a crowd and to divert the whole topic from the substance that matters, from the reason we had over a thousand people here. We had over a thousand people here because the Texans are frustrated. So yeah, it's okay that we haven't really tried Obamacare. I mean, that's, that's fine. It's just that Senator Cruz doesn't, he doesn't want to try it at all. We'll be right back. The forest is precious. One careless act caused by people and its beauty could be gone for a lifetime. Protect our friends in the forest. Only you can prevent wildfires. Attention students and faculty. Avery Rental Properties is now renting for the next school year. Avery accommodates all group sizes, small or large. Avery Rental Properties, make our house your home. 24-hour maintenance, garbage removal, snow removal, and off-street parking. Avery Rental Properties, 315-343-5005. Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP10. Like the number. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. The 2013 Lewis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. Moderated by ESPN sports broadcaster and class of 87, Steve Levy. Coming to Waterman Theater November 6th. Stay connected by visiting mediasummit.org for updates.
Welcome to the fourth season of Oswego Sports Update. I'm Blaze Hill. I'm Joe Manganiello. And I'm Adam Rupsick. Join us every Monday night at 11 for live sports action right here on WTOP 10. Now, not that this whole government shutdown and the Republicans thing isn't exciting, but what's next on the news today? Uh, according to my rundown here, which is indeed a blank piece of paper that I said is a rundown, but is not, uh, it's graffiti. But the difference is, this is really good graffiti. That makes a difference. So, according to CNN every day this month, a European graffiti artist known only as Banksy has been employing his art in the Big Apple causing New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg to declare an issue. Now here's the thing. For any of you who have ever been to New York, you know the place is disgusting. There's graffiti everywhere. Most of it isn't even good graffiti. It's like scrawl or racist sayings, or like gangs marking out their territories. This is really good graffiti. I mean, this is art. Check it out. So yeah, thumbs up to Banksy. Keep making the Big Apple beautiful. So, tragedy once again struck the U.S. school system on Tuesday when a middle school student in Sparks, Nevada pulled a gun, injuring two students and killing a beloved teacher before taking his own life. And once again, the solution is not to improve mental health checks or make it harder to buy guns, but instead to increase the amount of people with guns to counter bad guys with guns. Good idea, because the best way to prevent something that is obviously bad is to introduce more of it into the system. It's like saying if we increase the amount of McDonald's in the world, then we'll decrease the amount of people with diabetes. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to me. It shouldn't make sense to anybody else. It makes sense to somebody somewhere. Anyway, this and other school tragedies have led to some schools beginning to offer teachers courses to train them in the case that a gunman does enter the room. Not, not, so now, not only teachers are teaching your children, but you have a six-hour publicly funded bodyguard to your kid. This comes despite a survey that says the majority of teachers don't want to have to protect the children they teach. That's not saying they wouldn't if it came down to it, but, you know, people like this, or, well, maybe this. These guys are already trained. They can use a gun. It's their freaking job. So, I mean, hire a couple of guys to stand at the door, get a metal detector or something. I'm surprised students aren't stepping in and saying something. Because as, good as, you, because as good as your 11th grade English teacher is, she's not going to measure up to a gunman. So what are some other ways that we can prevent this kind of tragic event from happening? Ah, but wh why are we so against the NRA? I mean, they're supposed to be teaching us gun safety and whatnot, right? Oh, because the NRA hosts a youth day. Which is one of the, and is one of the country's top gun supporters in favor of less restrictions on guns. All right, back to the whole Youth Day thing. Um, I would like to state that there is no better way to protect our kids than to tell a three-year-old how to use a gun. I don't know if the NRA knows how a kid's mind works, but they're like little sponges. They see something, they associate something. That's how it works. So if you constantly see a gun, you know how to use it and what it's supposed to be used for. Ever gotten a new toy you weren't supposed to show anyone, but you invited your best friend over and showed them anyway because they wouldn't tell? That's what these kids are in the future. Because kids love to show off, and what better way to show off to your friends than to show them daddy's big dangerous gun? And guess what? You even know how to fire it. What could possibly go wrong? At least the NRA has been putting forth some effort to curb gun violence. 
they've invented a cute little eagle cartoon known as Eddie Eagle to explain to kids why they shouldn't use guns without supervision. And if you see one, why you shouldn't touch it. Eddie teaches kid to stop and back away from guns, but let's be honest here, he is still a cartoon. I mean, what other company has ever tried to do this, you know, promote something with a cartoon? Oh, right, uh, Joe Camel, I forgot about him. Anyway, that solved this issue. The NRA is slightly loopy. We'll be right back. Attention students and faculty. Avery Rental Properties is now renting for the next school year. Avery accommodates all group sizes, small or large. Avery Rental Properties make our house your home. 24-hour maintenance, garbage removal, snow removal, and off-street parking. Avery Rental Properties, 315-343-5005. Hi, I'm Al Roker, class of 76, Oswego State University. You're watching WTOP Channel 10. We didn't have this when I was in school. We just had radio and smoke signals. Get down. Get down. It's Saturday night. You just went out to a party with the girls. The guy in the stunner shades caught your eye. Your roommate's not there, so you bring him back to your room. It never occurred to you that you two might not be alone. Herpes, chlamydia, syphilis, gonorrhea, genital warts, and hepatitis could also be present. Well, what? <laughs> oh! Who's that? I'm syphilis. Can't you tell? This guy's been around. Safe sex is the best sex, so please use a condom every time. Hey guys, and welcome back to the political riot. Good news for you stoners out there. A Gallup poll recently revealed that a majority of Americans now support the legalization of marijuana. Those in favor of legalization skew young and liberal, though the biggest increase in support came among people identified as independents. 62% of independents favored legalization in 2013, up 12%, 12 percentage points from last year. According to the polls, 65% of Democrats favor legalization versus just 35% of Republicans. Now, there are good and bad sides to this. Just because it's supported doesn't mean it should become legal. I mean, there's no sense in introducing something else that is bad for us into the system. I don't know, though. Maybe the U.S. would be a better place if we all just smoked a little. I mean, Obama and Boehner getting together, settling their differences over a little funny grass. No, you're right. That, that's probably a terrible idea, actually. Uh, halfway through the con congressional debate, like, dude, do you want to go paint the White House? That sounds really cool. Let, let's go paint the White House right now. That, let's do it. We're going to go paint the White House. So uh, a little off politics and policy here. We'll switch to a story that I find hilarious. Now, as you know, almost everything goes here. I just did an impression as Congress as if they all got high and wanted to paint the White House five seconds ago. So like I said, everything on the field is playable here. Speaking of the field, this next story comes from North Texas, where a parent is suing an entire football team for bullying because this team beat her son's team 91 to nothing. Now, I know I'm not a sports show here, but there's something wrong with America if we can sue someone because we lost a game. I know 91 to nothing seems a little tough, but what exactly is the alternative? According to the coach of the Alito, Alito Bearcats, the team, that, the team that scored 90 points, he put every player he had on the field first through third string. What else is he going to do? Walk through the stadium and start picking people out to play? Uh, yeah, you there? Uh, yeah, kid wearing a catch. You're playing quarterback now. And uh, guy with the ankle brace? Running back. Come on, pad up here. I mean, 
The only thing this guy didn't do to try to make the game any easier was to start taking band members out and making them line up. I know high school sports are supposed to be fun and competitive, but they aren't a reason to sue over. And besides, should you really be suing the other team for being so good? Why not just sue your team because they're terrible? The best part of this is that the team could have scored a lot more. The coach was actually afraid they'd go over 100 points. So yeah, no brainer, just, just, let it, just let it be. If we all got this hyped up, then fans from Jacksonville would be suing the NFL and God forbid if you're a Giants fan. We'll be right back. So, uh, Malcolm, you do know that energy savers last six times longer than ordinary light bulbs. Well, this isn't my room. It, it's, it's Baron Davis's. Baron Davis, the basketball player? This is his room? Yep. Interesting, because we have Baron Davis right here. Baron, do you live here? No. I don't mean that, Baron Davis. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? The 2013 Lewis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. Moderated by ESPN sports broadcaster and class of 87, Steve Levy. Coming to Waterman Theater November 6th. Stay connected by visiting mediasummit.org for updates. Rob, what's up? How's it going? Guys, this is my cousin Rob from Michigan. What's up? He's a teenager. <laughs> hey, what's totally. up? Totally. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, you want to slow down? No. Really? Huh. Hey, you know what a beautiful animal is? A horse. A horse. Yeah. Beautiful mane. Unbelievable muscle tone. When it runs, it looks like poetry in motion. It's the most beautiful thing on earth. And sometimes when you feed a horse, its lips will tickle your hand. Just, just tickle it just a little bit. It makes me giggle sometimes. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you don't slow down, I'm gonna bite into your head like an apple. And thanks guys for listening to my horse stories. I could talk about ponies all day long. Hey guys, welcome back to The Political Riot. I'm obviously your host, Mike Taylor, because you've been watching me for the last 20 minutes or so, and if you haven't figured it out now, you probably shouldn't be watching television. Anyway, our guest tonight is a guy that's, that's very familiar. Uh, we like to refer to him as Not John Oliver. Uh, Not John Oliver, how, how are you doing tonight? I'm, I'm, pre I'm pretty good, John. Pre pretty good. I'm, I'm doing well. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, despite the school shootings, uh, the uh, the other stuff. I, I mean, I had an I had an average day. You know what I mean? We, so. Yeah, I have a, I, I've been in my uh, my government shutdown bunker for the past couple of days. Still, uh, is is it officially over? Yeah, yeah, it, it actually is over. Oh, since when? Uh, I think like three or four days ago. Three or four. Pro three. I, I, I've been trapped down there, and by trapped, I mean playing Pokemon X and Y since the release date down there, impending <laughs> ultimate doom. So how, how are your Pokemon? Doing, doing good? Just uh, they're, they're doing, yeah, they're doing quite uh, well. Have you yeah. beat the game yet? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm on the first gym after three days. <laughs> Ouch. I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, first gym, I mean, uh, you've made progress, obviously. Oh, a, a little bit, yeah. Okay. All right, well, obviously... Uh, You've been napping on the couch over there. You, you know what we've been talking about. Uh, first of all, the whole issue with the uh, Obamacare, the internet. Uh, I mean, if if we're gonna put something out there, that we have to be, we have to make sure we can like sign up for it. You know what I mean? Uh, is is that does does the whole system just have to be taken down and like re you know rebooted almost or reset or? Do you think we can just continue making the making changes to the website on the fly? Well, I don't know about you, but my computer is still running Windows 98, and I can run that CD. And actually, the floppy disk would be preferable. Um, but I, I think that, that that they should make it so people can sign up for it if they actually want to or not. Like, people should be able to support these things. So, so floppy disks are like still big where you come from. It's, oh, absolutely, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Over in the UK, everything, everything, every, floppy disk. everything, floppy, floppy disk. disk. Everything, every, every, really. Every, everything is floppy disk. How do you play DVD? Do you, do you, yeah, I mean, do you have both? I mean, the CD. The D, do you have a DVD? Was what, DVD? What's a DVD? Ah, got it. Okay. We're still on the eight-track.
truck. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're a little bit past that. We, uh, we've had this whole thing. Um, the whole issue, not necessarily an issue, I don't think it's an issue, with uh, legalizing marijuana. Uh, what, what's your take on that? I mean, I know, I know your country has different policies on this, but how, how do you think it'll affect the U.S. if it somehow gets passed? Well, everyone would be much more chilled, and pizza actually may become a vegetable, all right? Um, I, pizza becoming a vegetable is a great idea, and I think the only way to make pizza become a vegetable is by legalizing marijuana. They can't just make it a vegetable. It's got, it's got to be buy mar, yeah, buy marijuana. We have to admit, you're right. Yeah, totally right. Who would do that sober? I, I, I don't, I don't know, but somebody will do it eventually. I, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. That, that can't be. That can't. No. Yeah, it will not happen if marijuana is not legalized. So I am on board with legalizing marijuana if and only if it makes pizza become a vegetable. I, I like your stance on that. I, I really do. I, I, I appreciate that. So, um, one of your boys from uh, across the pond, he's been spraying up a little art across the Big Apple, some, you know, pretty heavy stuff. What do you think? I mean, should Mayor Bloomberg's head be blowing up from the awesomeness it creates, or is he just kind of being whiny like, you know, Michael Bloomberg? He's being whiny like Michael Bloomberg. Um, I like it. Uh, I think it looks quite nice, making a very dreary city look a little bit better in 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 light. Like those pictures were astounding. I, that is truly a work of art that I think should be truly recognized and definitely kept there. See, you come from a place where rain is prevalent, right? It rains a lot over there. Yes. It's kind of, it's, yes. I mean, it's cold in January. That is that is correct. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean. You call New York a dreary city, but you know what? I'll, well, I'll let, I'll let you skip it. The dreary in the mindset, not not the actual weather. Dreary, like, run down. It's just disgusting. Yes, yeah, disgusting, okay. yes. All right. Well, now that we have his opinion on that, we're going to take another break, I guess. Keep watching. We'll be right back. The mailbox and the traffic light. Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund, because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. The 2013 Lewis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. Moderated by ESPN sports broadcaster and class of 87, Steve Levy. Coming to Waterman Theater November 6th. Stay connected by visiting mediasummit.org for updates. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Drink from the tap. A $3 bottle of water a day times 10 years times 6% interest is over 14,000 grams. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. Attention students and faculty. Avery Rental Properties is now renting for the next school year. Avery accommodates all group sizes, small or large. Avery Rental Properties, make our house your home. 24-hour maintenance, garbage removal, snow removal, and off-street parking. Avery Rental Properties, 315-343-5005. Every night before the show, me and the guys, we like to loosen up a little bit. Blue, 42, hike! Every now and then, Dan likes to take it a little too far. But hey, the show's all about competition, so we'll take it. Stupid Dan with stupid football and stupid running. Well, I'm afraid that's all we got for tonight. We're going to wrap it up real quick here. I'd like to thank everybody who's in studio with me right now. I'd like to thank not John Oliver who came in. I'd like to thank that guy in the booth again. We're going to get, we're going to have him, we're going to give him a segment soon. Uh, like I said, though, thanks for everybody. Glad you guys could show up at 11 o'clock at night. Glad my viewers out there could stay awake until 11 o'clock at night. And we will see you next week. This is Political Riot.